Hey, fifth graders, it's Mrs. Seals back for our next science lab. We have been talking about energy. Um, this is going to be our last week to discuss energy for now. Um, we will be reviewing it towards the end of the school year when we get ready um, you know, for Science Star. But for now, this is our last week to talk about energy. So today we're going to be talking about light energy. So your target says, I can demonstrate that light travels in a straight line until it strikes an object and is reflected or travels through one medium to another and is refracted. So today we're gonna to focus on those two words, reflection and refraction, and make sure we understand the difference between them and examples of each one. So let's review. Hopefully you remember that energy is the ability to cause change or do work. And I gave you the acronym MELTS to help you remember the five different forms of energy that we will discuss. The M is for mechanical energy, which hopefully you remember is the energy of movement or motion. E is electrical energy, which we did last week with the circuits. L is for light energy, which we are talking about today. T is thermal, which is the same thing as heat, which we did with the popcorn kernel in the, the, um, in the test tube over the candle. And then the S is for sound energy. So light energy is a form of energy our eyes can detect. Light travels in a straight line until it hits an object. Then the light is either reflected or refracted. So let's talk about reflection first. This is probably the word that you're, the, you're more familiar with out of those two words. Reflection is the bouncing back of light rays from a surface. When light strikes an object, the angle of light is reflected back at the same degree. So if this is a mirror, well, better yet, I have a mirror. If this is a mirror, if the, I have a laser pointer here. If the laser pointer hits the mirror at, I don't know, I don't have a protractor, but let's say that it's hitting the mirror at a 45 degree angle. That means that the light is also bouncing off at a 45 degree angle, okay? So whatever angle the light is hitting the object is the same angle that it's bouncing off. All objects absorb and reflect light to different degrees. So that might be confusing to you, but um, what that's saying is that everything absorbs or takes in light and everything reflects light. It's just that not all objects absorb and reflect light the same amount. We tend to think of shiny flat surfaces as reflecting light. That's because they just reflect more light. They do a better job of reflecting light than, you know, um, objects that are not shiny or flat or still. Dark colors absorb light better and light colors reflect light better. That's why, um, you know, if you have a car that has like black seats in the summer, those seats get really, really, really hot. That's because the dark color is absorbing more light. And then if you had like a lighter colored seat in your car, it wouldn't feel quite as hot because the light would be reflecting or bouncing off. So here are some examples of reflection. I have a picture of a tree and it might be hard to tell, but this is, this is water. This is very still flat water. So because it's very still and flat, we can see the reflection of the tree in the water. Another example of reflection would be, um, you know, looking into a mirror. Mirrors are really good at reflecting light because they're smooth and flat. And um, even metal objects like spoons or car, the side of a car, anything that's metal and shiny and flat is really good at reflecting light. And we'll see some in reflection in just a minute. So refraction is probably a word that you are not as familiar with. Uh, I believe fifth grade is the first time you hear this word refraction when talking about light. In that word, we see the word fraction. Okay, 
So think about in math, a fraction is a part of something else. It's like when you have a whole and you break it up, right? So think of the word breaking or broken. So refraction is the bending of light as it moves through one medium to another, or you could hear it described as the breaking of light. A medium is matter that light travels through. So that could be, for example, water, air, glass. Those are what we call mediums. And when light travels through them, a lot of times it gets bent. And that's because light travels through objects at different speeds. We'll talk more about that in just a second. When light moves through one medium to another, the speed of the light changes causing the angle of light to change or appear to bend. So refraction is the breaking or bending of light. Here are some examples of refraction. When you um, have a glass and you have like a pencil or a straw or something in it, sometimes it looks or appears to be bent or broken. We're gonna look at that in person in just a minute. That's refraction. Um, this is something called a prism, which I have and we'll talk about in a minute. It's not, you're not gonna be able to see the refraction through the prism at home. It's pretty difficult to even see in person. We'll talk more about that in a minute. And um, these are lenses and there's different types of lenses and depending on how they're shaped, they, they um, bend or refract the light in different ways. Eyeglasses um, depend on refraction um, telescopes, microscopes, anything with a lens works because it bends or refracts the light. Certain type of lenses um, help us to be able to see objects larger. Other lenses make objects appear smaller. Okay, so we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna explore refle reflection <laughs> and refraction. Um, this isn't really an experiment. This is more just exploration and giving some more examples to make sure that we, we understand um, the difference between those two words and what examples are showing reflection and what examples are showing refraction. Um, so it's kind of just like an exploration today. So to, to explore reflection, what the kids in class will be doing is they will, their table group will have a laser pointer and um, they will have some mirrors and there will be targets that they will have to hit. So they're gonna work together to, they can't move their laser pointer, but they can only move, oh, do you see the laser? I wonder if you're gonna be able to see it on this YouTube video. That'll be interesting. I don't know. But they're not going to move the laser. They're going to position the laser in one spot, but they're going to move the reflection just by, whoa, sorry, just by moving the, um, just by moving the mirror. They're going to change the reflection and try to get it to uh, hit some certain targets that are set up. So that's called reflection relay. Okay, it'll, it'll kind of look like a maze and they'll be able to see the angle that the um, light is coming out of the laser and then bouncing or reflecting off the mirror. Okay, um, so that's our exploration for reflection. When we're talking about refraction, I have a couple different things. Uh, number one, here is the old pencil in the glass trick. So I have a glass of water. I don't know if this is going to be able to translate to video either. I have a pencil. You notice my pencil is very straight. When I put it in the water, what if I hold it up? That kind of works. Yeah, see that? When I, hold, when I hold it up, when I put it in the water, do you see how it right here, the pencil appears to be bent or broken? That's refraction. This, the light travels at a different speed once it enters this water. So that's why it appears to look bent or broken, okay? I can take it out and prove to you, show you it's not bent or broken. It's just our eyes playing tricks on us. That's refraction. 
Um, and then another example of refraction is using a prism. This is called a prism. Again, you're not going to be able to see the way this works um, through my YouTube video here. Oh, that looks cool. <laughs> so, um, but you can look up videos on a prism. So the way a prism works is that you have to have white light and white light comes from either the sun or stars or LED lights. These type of lights that we have in our classroom are not white light. So that's why this doesn't work well. We're gonna have to, when we do this in class, we're gonna have to use the light from the sun and hope it works, hope it's a sunny day. And what it does is when the white light enters the prism, white light is actually made up of many, many, many different colors. So when, when the white light enters the prism, the different colors that make up white light, you know, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, all the colors of the rainbow, travel at different speeds through this glass. And so what you can do is you can project it onto a white piece of paper and you can actually see it, it will look like a rainbow because the prism separates the colors since each color travels at a different speed through the prism. Okay, that's another example of refraction. I wish that you could see it on the video, but um, you know, we can only do so much. Look, I have two mouths. All right, so prism is another example of refraction. Um, one more thing I wanna talk about are two different types of lenses. These also both work with or by refraction and bending the light, but there are two different types that I wanna talk about. And again, you're probably not gonna be able to see the difference um, from here, but We'll, we'll see what we can do. So this one is called a convex lens. And if you were to be in class and feel this, um, you would feel that it kind of almost feels like a bubble. It's kind of shaped like, let me draw it for you. It's kind of shaped like this, where it is thicker in the middle and then gets thinner out towards the edges, convex. And the way you can remember the difference is convex has an X. So it's like it's popping out like an X, okay? So a convex lens is one type of lens that's used for refraction. If you were to look through this, I know that it's making my eye and stuff look bigger, but if you look through it, it actually makes things appear smaller. Whoa, this is blowing my mind, okay? <laughs> so um, some, depending on um, different, you know, I, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Okay, people get eyeglasses for different reasons. Some people have trouble seeing far away. Some people have trouble seeing up close. Some people have trouble focusing at night. Some people um, have trouble, you know, tracking objects. There's many different reasons people get eyeglasses. So depending on the reason, some eyeglasses are made with convex lens. Most eyeglasses are made with a combination of convex and the other type we're about to talk about, okay? Because they, depending on what is wrong with your eyes or what you need your glasses for, will depend on the shape of your eyeglasses, all right? So it's usually a combination of convex and concave lenses that make up eyeglasses. All right, so convex X, it's the one that pops out in the middle. The other type of lens is called a concave lens. And if you were to feel this one from the side, let me draw this one, it would feel like it was thinner in the middle, whoops, and thicker out at the top and bottom, 
okay and it gets thinner in the middle so you can think of this one as concave like you're going through a cave so you have to get smaller like this one does in the middle concave lenses make images appear larger these are the types of lenses that are used in lots of different things telescopes magnifying glasses um, binoculars cameras eyeglasses anything that is used where and to where you can see images larger uses concave lenses okay like i said before most eyeglasses are a combination of convex and concave lenses depending on what needs you have for your eyes and what you are you know having trouble with and what you need help with but concave lenses are what are used in most other things that use lenses cameras binoculars magnifying glasses um microscopes all of those things use concave lenses all right so those are just two different types of lenses that refract the light in different ways i wanted you to see those and kind of learn the difference remember the convex one is the one that pops out in the middle and it's thinner at the top and bottom that makes images appear smaller the concave one is the one that is wider at the top and bottom and thinner in the middle. This makes images appear larger. And this one is used in microscopes, telescopes, binoculars, all those things. All right. Um, there's not really much you can do at home for this one because you probably don't have any of these materials. Um, the biggest thing with reflection and refraction is just making sure you understand what those words mean, understanding the difference, and understanding examples of both of those. There is a short quiz on Schoology after this video all about reflection and refraction. Um, remember, it's not required, but I would love to see what you learned. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. I will see you next week. Bye, guys.